I usually don't like to talk about political YouTubers due to all the unnecessary controversy that spawns from it. But since nowadays it's all about representation, I thought I'd get some more dog representation on this show. After all, I'm half dog on my mom's side. So how about we get woke with number one Marmaduke fan? Now from what I've gathered, Marm took some art classes in college, but noticed that a lot of his teachers' politics were slanted to a more left-winged side. Marm, being more right-leaning, decided to speak out about this current trend of forcing one ideology into media by joining a movement called Comicsgate. He now makes YouTube videos commentating about the left's use of art and spreading their political agenda. But make no mistake, he's not your typical dress suit clad skeptic YouTuber with his enlightened intelligence decimating all those in his sight. His videos usually aren't that malicious, he doesn't try to win arguments. He just tries to offer his opinions humbly. Sometimes he'll come off as standoffish, but for the most part, he tries to find common ground between him and his opposition. It's only going to cause more pain and death and destruction. We don't need a violent Marxist revolution to fix these problems. That The thing I have to fix is myself. I'm in control of my behavior. I have to uh, change my behavior to rise me out of these cir these poor circumstances that that I am in, and even if it's paycheck to paycheck kind of stuff, that there are still there's still opportunities for you to do that. And it, experiencing something in your life isn't the same as an argument. Just because I experience Marxist at my school doesn't mean that all schools are Marxist or that all teachers are Marxist. Of course not. But but my what my experience taught me is that the the effect that Marxism has on young people in these schools is nasty, and I hate that. And because my friends were left of center, because uh, I made friends with people who did not share my religious beliefs or political beliefs, I identify with them, I care about them, and I don't want to see them radicalized into a political ideology, which makes it impossible for them to succeed as artists, to uh, go out into the world and sell art, to go out in the world and have friends and customers who are conservatives or classical liberals. I, I want a happy, healthy country where people with lots of different political perspectives can share a country and get along and have some shared beliefs, even if we don't share all our beliefs. And I think one of the major problems that a lot of people have, left and right, is we have this sort of uh, stress. We have this feeling that it's, it's you know, bleep's going to hit the fan. It's going to get worse and worse, and we have nothing in common. And, and I don't know what the future holds, but I, I am convinced that the problem in the American university system is more than just a couple random Marxist art professors. It's a problem of all of their materials. We sometimes forget that on the other side of our screens are just other people. I mean, it's easy to just see everyone with differing views as being horrible inhuman monsters or unenlightened sheep in desperate need of re-education. But as a Christian, I believe we should give compassion to all, even those who don't offer us any. And I believe Marm shows all that in spades. But he's no stranger for the occasional snarky jokes when necessary. It's all in good fun. I don't believe he's actually trying to be malicious. This next page is an excellent example of economy of space. For, you see, it both continues the story of Spider-Man's pursuit of these dangerous criminals and it asks you to find 10 mistakes in this drawing. For example, Spider-Man is missing the whites in his eyes. Notice the definition of Spider-Man's muscles. There are certainly some very silly mistakes in this drawing of Spider-Man, but in the end, it is still a drawing of Spider-Man. Can you imagine making a silly mistake where it would not even look like Spider-Man by forgetting that he is a masculine character? That would just be too silly. And like a lot of people online now, Marm has made quite a few videos on that new Thundercats War cartoon. But instead of just saying how much it sucks and how evil the creative team behind it is, he actually breaks down why the animation style doesn't work and how the team doesn't really understand the source material as much as they think they do. So what's my take on the Thundercats Roar show? Well, I think the reason I had a initial bad reaction is I think that the Steven Universe Adventure Time style, it's not that it's entirely bad, it's that it's overdone and it's starting to feel stagnant. And the, the reason I had forced myself to think about this is I realized, well, you know, I could bark on about, you know, this cartoon and how sucky it is and how cartoons were much better when I was growing up. But 
a lot of Cartoon Network shows from the 90s and 2000s did have a very simple, straightforward style. Uh, Dexter's Laboratory, Samurai Jack, they, they very much would have very simple shapes and very simple ideas. So is it just nostalgia? Do I let my shows off the hook, but not new shows? And what I think I'll do to defend my initial reaction is that a lot of those, uh, the cart, kind of the young, what would you call them? The scrappy young Cartoon Network artists who took over for the old Hanna-Barbera cartoonists. They did have a very simple cartoony style based on simple shape that was influenced by CalArts. But I think there was still an appeal to those characters that's lacking in the Steven Universe characters. Now, the, the, the Steven Universe characters, the Adventure Time characters, these Thundercat characters, you know, they still look friendly. They still look nice. But I think there's something vaguely off-putting about them. And I think that comes from everybody drawing the same way for too, too, too long and not, not getting enough variety. The vision of the show that uh, Jules had was a very clear, clean action adventure show with a very clearly defined comedy element. I think they had very clear visions for each of the characters. I remember there was no question there was going to be a good guy girl. This is like the most mom thing ever. <laughs> And so we created Chitara, and of course there were a lot of a lot of jokes to me. At first they didn't want to give her a weapon, they wanted to put her in the Lair's kitchen, and thank God they were joking. People who tell meaningful stories can have a sense of humor, and she gets the sense of humor of it all. If you guys want to watch the full videos, I'll just post a link in the description. Mar makes a lot of good points, so it's kind of hard to just you know, shoehorn in the uh, the really good ones. It'll just be this really long video if I try to do that. All in all, Marm just seems to be a man on a mission, and it's not to push out all the social justice warriors from the internet and entertainment, but rather to make entertainment less homogenized in the different ideas and ideologies presented. That and bring back fun to comics and animation. I mean, we don't seem to enjoy fun anymore in our entertainment. It's all about having a deeper message or a narrative behind it all. Nothing wrong with any of that. You know, having a little substance with the style is good, but when it just becomes pushing one sort of narrative or ideology, you know, what's the point? It just becomes boring. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Oh, and uh, speaking of art, if you're looking for a new cartoon series, check out Imara. It's about this original Middle Eastern superhero rather than just recoloring an already established character as a person of color. If you like Studio Trigger and Imaishi's spastic and expressive style, you might enjoy this. Just thought I'd plug another artist's work. Anyways, uh, now I'll end the video. Bye.